Hey, physics boss man coming back. Assuming a constant braking force, use the work energy theorem to show that a vehicle's stopping distance is proportional to the square of its initial speed. If a car going 45 kilometers per hour stops in 50 meters, what is the stopping distance if the initial speed is 90? Kilometers per hour. That's how you can do physics. Physics, a boss, because you are created. You are created in God's image to be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue. Do it. Okay, so to interpret the problem, we want to draw a good picture. So if the car with an initial velocity, the final velocity is zero, stopping distance we call d, and there's a braking force that's in the direction opposite the motion uh, while it's braking. So the principle here was actually given. In the statement of the problem, the work energy theorem. Okay, so to, de to develop our plan to solve it, we want to express uh, the initial and the final kinetic energy in terms of the relevant uh, speeds and the mass of the car. Uh, we want to express the work in terms of the braking force and the stopping distance. And then we set the work equal to the change in kinetic energy that's the work energy theorem right there. And then the last step is just to solve for D, the stopping distance, uh, symbolically, of course. All right, now to evaluate. God has crowned you, you, you with glory and honor. Honor to rule, rule over his creation. 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 We're just carrying out our bullet point plan. Uh, so, K initial is one half the mass of the car times the initial speed squared. K final is one half the mass times the final speed squared. And that is zero because it's stopping, right? It's not over until it stops. All right, now the work uh, in this kind of case is the force vector dotted with the displacement vector in the case of a constant force. And so the, the force and the displacement vector are both constant. So this works out to be the force times the distance times the cosine of the angle. I mean, let's be a little careful here because the displacement vectors in the positive x direction, the way we've drawn the picture. The braking force is in the negative x direction, the way that we've drawn the picture. So theta is 180 degrees. So cosine of 180 degrees is negative. So it's minus the force times the uh, stopping distance. All right, so now what the work energy, now this is from the definition of work. So let's not get lost in a formula roulette here. The definition of work says that in the case of a constant uh, displacement and a constant force, the work is the dot product. The work energy theorem says the mechanical work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So, and so this is going to be K final minus k initial. And the signs are important here. So setting these two works equal to each other, uh, negative force times displacement is equal to, well, k final is zero, so it's just negative k initial minus one half um, the initial squared. Negative signs cancel out. So now the Stopping distance, dividing both sides by the braking force, is one half m v initial squared divided by the braking force. 
And so this is what we were asked to do, at least in the first half of the problem. It wanted us to show that the stopping distance is proportional to the square of the initial speed. Science is a gift from God. To help us master nature. But sin added thorns and thistles. Requiring the sweat of your brow to succeed. All right, so now we have to evaluate for the second half. So essentially, the, the second half is not as complicated as it might be if the numbers were different, right? But with the two cases we have, one of the stopping distance, one of the, one of the initial speeds is twice the other initial speed, right? So we have, you know, in, in case one, it's uh, 45 kilometers per hour, and in case two, it's 90 kilometers per hour. So we don't have to get bogged down in all the numbers. The, the idea is just that it's doubled. So we can use that because the stopping distance is proportional to the square of the initial speed, right? So, you know, D1 over D2, if you want to say it this way, is equal to V1 squared over V2 squared. So we really want the two here, so we should write. We should have written this a different way. Just, just uh, take the reciprocal of the whole expression. D two over D one equals V one squared. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, V two squared over V one squared. D two equals D one times V two squared over V one squared. So you just plug in the numbers here. And it turns out this factor is just 4. So D2 equals D1 times 4. So it's 50 meters times 4, or 200 meters. Learning physics often requires prayer. As we submit to Jesus Christ as risen, as risen King of Kings and Lord of Lords. All right, so to assess, let's think about the units. Well, you know, when you're just dealing with the proportionality like we were in the first half of the problem, show that this is proportional to the square of that. Uh, the units aren't terribly important, uh, but we did take some care with our units, so our proportionality is constant is correct as well. Thinking about the units, uh, the units on the left-hand side of the equation here are Newton meters. The units on the right side of the equation here are joules but a newton meter is equal to a joule, so our expression uh, is correct for the units. The sign, um, we paid attention to our signs. The negative signs cancels out. The change in kinetic energy was negative. The work was negative, and they canceled out, so the sign thing works. What about the magnitude? And this requires a little more thought. One of the ways that you can approach this from a magnitude point of view is to go back and take the same uh, ideas but approach them with kinematics rather than with the work energy theorem. And so let's think about how we'd approach it with kinematics. X final is equal to the average velocity times the time. But the average velocity is just V initial plus V final over 2. And the time, when you think about it, the, the time to stop is equal to V initial divided by the acceleration. We reign by surrender. We reign by surrendering to Jesus and praying for our daily bread, which includes success, success in our schoolwork. God will answer and lighten our yoke and the impact of the thorns and thistles in our labor. And V final is equal to zero. So this is V initial over two times V initial over the acceleration. So from this point of view also, the stopping distance X final is also proportional to the square of the initial speed. Wow, this physics is getting harder and harder as the uh, semester goes along. So I want to remind everyone to write and pray and let me join you in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of working physics in Jesus' name. We thank you that your, your blessing is upon us because we're made in the image of God. You have blessed us and said, 
Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the birds of the air and the beasts of the field and the fish of the sea. And your word also says, for those of us who uh, have put our trust and our surrender and our faith in the Lord Jesus, that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So Lord God, we pray that you help us to do our physics homework through Christ who gives us strength. Help us to persevere when it's difficult. Help us to plow through those thorns and thistles. And Lord God, since we have uh, yoked ourselves to Christ and the Lord Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, we pray that you'd lighten our yoke and help us uh, clarify our minds and make us more skillful so that there's fewer thorns and thistles in our physics work. We pray in Jesus' name. Good, good word, good, good word is a message from our God trying to tell you all about how to get to the kingdom. Good life. Written in the word in the good, good word is a message from our God gonna tell you all about how to get to the kingdom. The good life. Oh, I, I love Jesus. La 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 la